welcome YouTube, my name is Cherise, welcome to Reese TV, glad that you're here. This will be my Legends of Tomorrow Episode 7 Maroon Review. I'll be covering this with my normal OMG moments, just be careful of spoilers if you haven't seen this episode. OMG moment number 7, our heroes receive a beacon call from another time ship. Could it be a trap? Rip Hunter doesn't care, it seems that Gideon needs an upgrade in order to find Vandal Savage because you know that person who could help find Vandal Savage is too busy flirting with Ray. Talk about mixed signals. OMG moment number six. The Star Trek puns are for real. Ray compares himself with Captain Kirk. Kendra compares him with Captain Picard. But I think that he's more of a Wesley. OMG moment number five. It turns out that it was a trap, but not by the Time Masters, but the Time Pirates. And they want the Wave Rider. But Rip Hunter doesn't give up the Wave Rider so easy. Turns out that he has some protocols set in place just in case something like this happens. And it makes Ray look like a better captain than both Picard and Kirk combined. Unfortunately, the pirates catch on and throws our heroes in the brick. Good thing Rip told Stein to stay back because we wouldn't see Stein kung fu hustle it throughout the ship. It's amazing what one can learn from a book. OMG moment number four. A flashback reveals that the name Rip Hunter is just an alias. The Time Masters take on a false name in order to save their ancestors. So what is his real name? Of course, L.O.T. doesn't go over this, but to be fair, not even the comic does. It turns out that only three people know Rip Hunter's real name. And even though one of those people is Miranda, she doesn't slip either. And Miranda isn't even her real name. Too bad Rip never thought to bring a fake picture of his family just in case Vandal Savage got a look at his family and killed off his family in his present day. Just saying. OMG moment number three. Cabin fever hits Rip and Mick hard. Rip's true feelings about Mick come out. It turns out that Mick was just a package deal. Hurtful words, Rip. Hurtful words. And Rip tries to apologize, but it's too late to apologize. It's too late. Mick decides to sell out the team and the ship in order to get home to 2016. Say it ain't so, Mick. Say it ain't so. Say that you have a plan to double cross the pirates. Say that you're going to show them once and for all that you're more than just brawn. Nope. Mick gets on a ship with the pirates and asks Snart to pick a side. And Snart answers by shooting one of the pirates in the face. Yeah, Captain Cold is team hero now. What? <laughs> OMG moment number two. Kendra kisses Ray. Girl, make up your dag blame mine. Just last week you were saying that life was just too complicated for whatever that was. And now you're going to go ahead and kiss the guy? Why? Because he almost died repairing the ship? Now given, she never said no, but poor Jax. You know what makes matters worse is that if Stein didn't try to be Jax's wingman, then Ray wouldn't have gotten the idea to approach Kendra, and Kendra wouldn't have gotten the idea that maybe, just maybe, she does have room for a relationship. And unfortunately, I feel like this sets us up for everybody knows that Kendra and Ray are an item, but Jack's cliche. And OMG moment number one, Snart puts Mick down. But of course, it all happens off screen, so we all know that Mick is going to be back. Final thoughts, this whole episode was emotionally jarring. From the first scene where we see Rip play back a holographic message from his late wife and son to Rory's old yeller exit. And despite the episode's minor flaws, like why was it that Snart was the only one that got shot? And when did Snart have time to recharge his gun? I enjoyed it. And that's the end of my review. Tell me, what do you think? Leave it in the comments below. Please like and share this video. I make a video every week, so please subscribe so I can see you next time. Bye-bye.